Hello friends, I'm super excited about this video. Actually, this is going to be a multi-part video. Uh, what we're going to talk about is time intelligence and calculation groups. These are two of my favorite areas in Power BI. There are many blog posts on time intelligence, many blog posts on calculation groups and how they work together and uh, uh, how you can take advantage of um, calculation groups. I was working on a project for one of my customers recently and then I was uh, doing the time intelligence and using calculation groups. And then I came across a corner use case uh, where there was a special need uh, from my customer. And while resolving that and working on it, um, I, I find something really interesting. And that's what I will be um, showing in these videos. Uh, let's get to Power BI and take a look uh, about the data and the calculation groups and the time intelligence functionality together. Okay, here I have a very simple data set. I have a, a data which shows the sales data and then I have a calendar table connected together. And um, I also have created a couple of visuals here. On the top, I'm showing sales by a year, quarter and month and then selected 2021 and uh, that's pretty much it and there's a slicer for month. And then at the bottom, this is where we will use uh, calculation group items and uh, just showing the color and the sales. Color is just a product. So I already created a calculation group with the time intelligence and period. Let me quickly show you guys that. So here I have a, a calculation group called time intelligence and uh, the name is called, the column name is called period. And then I created like a for month to date, previous, quarter date, previous, year to date, uh, trailing 12 months and previous trailing 12 months. So these measures are pretty straightforward. The standard measures, nothing um, special about this. Uh, for month to date, we are getting dates, month to date on calendar, uh, standard time intelligence function. For previous month to date, we are taking, uh, going back by one month. Quarter to date, again, dates QTD and then uh, in previous quarter date going back by one one quarter year to date is year to date and ttm is just a little bit different because what we're using here is in a dates in period uh, again i'm not going deep into time intelligence functions here but i'm just showing what we are doing with these calculation items and uh, what the what where we will get into a problem and how we will solve it so trailing 12 months is again date in period so we are getting what our current maximum date is based on our selection and then we are moving back by 12 months. So this is giving tra trailing 12 months. And with the previous TTM, we are going, going back like that number of months. Um, so let's look at this in the action and then we will see how this works and where we will get into the, in, into the problem. So what we, I'm going to do is from my time intelligence, I'm bringing the period on my, um, canvas here and then we'll create this as an a as an a slicer let's do um, a select all and multi select and then here in my visual on the bottom matrix visual what I will do is put my um, period um, let me actually turn off uh, this uh, edit interactions so in, in, the, in the bottom one, what I will do is I will bring the period on my columns so we can see all the, so now month to date, previous quarter, month to date, quarter, it's all showing up in here. Let me make it a little bigger so that we can see what's happening, maybe 16. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna select first two items right now. Now, if we look at this one, this is clearly wrong. Um, so I have selected only year and um, and uh, the month is not selected. So what is month to date giving if no month is selected? So basically it is giving me the month to date of the last month, uh, which based, based on the current selection, which is December. So that is giving month to date. That's perfectly fine because that's the last month to date we want to use based on the selection. Well, what is this 4,884? What is this number, previous month to date? Previous month to date, I expected 221. So December is 745 and the November is 2021. 
So where is this 4884 is coming? Let's first dig into that and then, then we will uh, have a solution. I have a separate page here uh, where I already created a measure. The same scenario, uh, I have a, 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 a measure which I will just actually call measure. So what that measure is doing, it's basically taking the date at calendar date minus one month, same, same calculation what we used in the previous month to date, so move back by one month. And then I'm just showing the what is the start date from this particular table coming out to be and what the max date is. So the, the, if you look at this right now, so what it is doing is based on our selection. If I just re remove everything, I have still 2021 selected as in our first page. So the range is giving me December 2020 to November 2021. So all the dates are shifted by one month. It's not like only the last month, but the whole period shifted. So it still dates at uh, this particular is giving us uh, all the 12 months, but moved by back by one month. But th this is this is where the 4884 is coming. That number is coming. If we sum the value of these 12 months starting from December 2020 to November 2021, that will be 4,884. And that is what number we are seeing here. But this is not what we want. We want previous month to date is based on whatever the last date is in our selection, which is 745 is perfectly fine. That's working fine. So one fix is, you know, if I select a month, this is perfectly fine. This is what I expect, 745 and 221. That's December and that's 1221 and this is November. But the, 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 the problem we run into, the user want, okay, um, we can make this as in a radio box, kind of a single selection, uh, you know, then the user can only single select. And then this solves the problem. But the, the real question came was, is like, I want this to be month to date, previous month to date, but here I want to see uh, more months, right? This is this is showing on, not showing the period uh, uh, dates here, right? It's based on the month to date is based on the selection. But here, um, user want to see all the year, all the months uh, in the matrix visual. So one way could be, okay, we can have a, uh, you know, edit interactions turned off. So this slicer does not turn off, uh, does not filter this visual. That will solve the problem. But it means um, that is surely uh, a way, one way to do that. But I never use that. The reason behind that is if you are, if you miss to do that, it or you're creating other reports and whatnot. If you miss to change the edit interactions based on the month, then you will end up into the same wrong result here, right? So if I go back to not to make it single select, and let's say if no period is selected, this is perfectly fine, but I want my 4,884 to be correct, showing up based on the all the months selected. So the, the month to date is showing me the last month to date, doesn't matter what period I select here. And then the previous month to date should be based on the last month to date. And let's look at the quarter to date and the previous quarter to date. It's gonna be the same problem. So quarter to date is 144, which is perfectly fine. But previous quarter to date, I expect 957. This is Q4 21, this is Q3 2021. And uh, the 1444 is fine because that's a, with the, given our selection, that's the last quarter and that's perfectly fine. But 520, uh, 5,212 is something totally wrong because then it moved the date what I showed you guys in the another page. So what's the fix? So this is where that we can take advantage of calculation groups. Again, we can go back to the calculation groups and make that small changes, very small change, and then that will fix the problem. And uh, let's go back and uh, what that change is going to be. And uh, so let's go back to previous month to date. What we have is selected, my, so month to date is simple my year, selected dates month calendar date, this is great. And previous month to date is date add, and as, as we saw it moved the whole period, whatever the period selected by, by one month. But we just want one last month based on the, uh, based on the selection in our month. So if December is the selection, last month selected, 
um, uh, for the month to date, then we want the November to show up. So what we can do is very, very small thing. So what we are going to take advantage of time intelligence. This is our a uh, time intelligence um, calculation group and period is our column. And what we're going to say is give me month to date. So what I'm saying is I'm filtering this particular previous month to date measure. I'm filtering out month to date. What will that give me? That will give me this month to date, right? And then the previous month to this, on top of that, I'm adding this filter, moving the dates back by one month. And let's see if this fix uh, fixes the issue or not. So go back. I just push the changes. Boom. So what we have is 221. So this fix, so if I, let's say, select a many months in here, and uh, if I re remove December, so now I expect month to date is my last selection, which is November 221. And previous month to date, I expect to be October. And then that is October 478, as you can see in this. So now we don't need to change the edit interactions. We don't need to do anything but the calculation group with a small change that fix the problem. Here now, it's up to me. If the use case is it has to be single select, then let it be single select. It will work in that case. And uh, if, if this need to be a, a, a multi-select for whatever the reason, then it will work in, in that case as well. And uh, the same thing what we will do is for our quarter to date as well. So it's pretty straightforward again. So what we're doing is we are using another calculation item, which is which for like a month to date calculation item within the previous month to date uh, calculation item. So we are using the calculation items within uh, each other. So same thing I will do with the previous quarter to date. So let's go back to here. I will add one small line time intelligence period is equal to QTD and push the changes. And uh, once this is done, so look at that. So our uh, quarter to date is uh, Q based on the selection. The most recent uh, last uh, quarter is a Q4 2021. This is 1,444. And the previous quarter is 957. Before that, we were getting some 5,212 numbers because the dates moved. So what we did with this one is uh, we created a very scalable solution and uh, we use the calculation items within the calculation items to achieve our our result and uh, with a small line a small code in our index expression uh, in our calculation item and it solved the problem otherwise we have to change the added interactions and do other things now this of course as we know the calculation groups can be applied on any measure we can use it on quant right now and i think i'm using on sales measure and uh, we, if, if I come here and I want to change, apply it on a quantity, I can just replace sales with the quantity and that whole thing will work for that. That's just how the calculation groups are. Uh, I will be doing a couple of more videos like this. Uh, this is part one. There are a few other areas which I want to um, um, showcase the same, how you can use calculation item within the calculation item. Stay tuned. Do subscribe my channel. Let me know what you think about this video. Until next video, have a good day. Bye for now.